My balls hurt today. Let's review a game. Today, we're taking another look at 3DO, the company, not the console. In the past, I did two extensive videos about the Army Men games, and those videos have done pretty well for me, because I'm like one of the few people that's even acknowledged this game series' existence. Is it series or series -es? Oh, Who gives a fuck? So Army Men may have been 3DO's main thing, but they had their hands in other cookie jars too, just like Might and Magic, for instance. But in 1998, somebody at 3DO decided, you know, you know what? What if we take a game where we just take a bunch of tanks and they blow each other up? A simple concept, but a good one. In fact, it had already been thought up many years ago, back on the Atari 2600 with Combat, a tank fighting game which had a bunch of different modes, including Invisible Tank Pong. Invisible Tank Pong doesn't even sound like a real game. It sounds like you put a whole bunch of words together, like Batman Hamburger. There isn't really much info about Battle Tanks, its development, or the people behind it out there on the internet, other than just the simple obvious stuff. What I do know is that 3DO advertised the shit out of this game, and it had a very funny ad campaign. So in America, there's a fabric softener company called Snuggle, and they have a mascot that's called the Snuggle Bear, and the Battle Tanks commercial is like a parody of it. Introducing Battle Tanks for Nintendo 64. Explosive tank action for up to four players. Battle Tanks. And that was the shtick they came up with. Everything cute and innocent has to die. And unlike most of 3DO's output, Battle Tanks is actually pretty good. It doesn't try to be anything but what it is. Stupid, mindless fun. And we're gonna play that stupid, mindless fun today. This is Battle Tanks. Now, Battle Tanks is a Nintendo 64 game, and I tend not to review Nintendo 64 games on this channel, and there's a very damn good reason why. Normally, the games I want to review have a PS1 version that's normally better, but this game was exclusive to the 64. The second reason is emulation for the 64 is garbage. It's a female gar, a garbage. So half the Nintendo 64 games I try to review or play don't work half the time. It's like the developer said, okay, we got the Nintendo and the Rare games working, that's it, fuck it. You want to emulate something other than that, it's gonna run like shit. Ah, my old nemesis. Are you gonna behave this time? Are you gonna be good? You gonna be good? You're gonna suck, aren't you? Yes, you are. Who's a shitty emulator? So in this game, you got a single player campaign and a ton of multiplayer modes. We're gonna be looking at the campaign today. So in fictional 2001, there's a pandemic that killed 99.9% .9 of women. Oh, you don't know nothing about pandemics yet, 2001. All 2001 had to worry about in January was fucking AOL free trial discs and singers that sang like this. It's been a while with arms wide open prep tonight. I swear 2001 was the year of singers with nasally low toned voices. What the fuck? Nickelback even did that before they got popular. Anyway, I'm gonna shut up about music. I could talk about music all day. Would you guys like some videos where I just talk about that? Let me know. Anyway, a virus killed 99% of women in the world and the women that were left were captured by the military and put in quarantine zones. The men weren't really happy about that. So they had a nice peaceful protest and the government saw the error of their ways and gave the women back to the men. Hell no, they shot them all. But what do you expect? You can't make an omelet without killing a few hundred people. So the protagonist of our game is called Griffin Spade and he's dead set that nobody gets his wife. But then she turns herself in to protect him. Unfortunately, nuclear war happens and the government has fallen and all the men left in the world start tank gangs and start fighting for territory. So Griffin gets his own tank and sets off to go hunt for his wife. And can we talk about that name, Griffin Spade? Why don't you just go ahead and name him Chad Steele? I'm Chad Steele. I got a big tank and a small dick. Rumble packs. All right, boys, get your vibrators in. If you have to climax, go outside and do that. Don't do it in the tank. We have to work in there. That is so cheesy looking, I love it. And the tank has a license plate that says, eat me. Now it may surprise you to know that this game has tank controls. <gasps> no, who'da thought? 
This is the one game, the only game where you can excuse that because it's a fucking tank. Fast tank too, look how fast this thing goes. Got that zero turning radius too, it's like my lawnmower. You know what, the simplicity of the tank controls kind of makes sense here. You can run the whole tank with one analog stick. My only gripe is the turret doesn't move. If you want to aim at something, you have to move the whole tank. A modern game would have it to where you would move with the left stick and turn the turret with the right stick. But since the N64 only had one stick, this makes sense. In addition to your main gun, you've also got power-ups like missiles, guided missiles, grenades, and also turrets that you can lay down. There's a couple of different mission types in the game. You either have to destroy a set number of tanks, you either have to go to the goal, sometimes there's a capture the flag mission, so there's a little variety. You probably noticed that my main cannon ammo isn't going down. That's actually not a cheat, that's something that you can enable in options. And turning that on keeps it to where you don't get soft lock on one mission, where you've done gotten all the power-ups and used up all your ammo and now you can't really do anything anymore. That is possible to do. A tank with no ammo just might as well be a bulldozer. Cause isn't that all they are? Just a bulldozer with a gun? I've got a bulldozer, I can make one right now. Go Marvin Heemeyer on your asses. The best item in this game is the nuke. It's literally a nuclear bomb. And it explodes over the entire map and basically kills or destroys everything. Including you! It kills tanks, it kills turrets, it kills the frame rate, it kills everything. Who would have thought a nuclear weapon would be the only thing to make my Nvidia 3060 cry? RTX on, bitch! Also, it's nice that they give you a passcode in case you don't have a memory card. This was about the era where they were starting to move away from passwords. The points actually do something in this game. The more points you get, the more extra lives you get. I didn't really need the lives that much because I really didn't start dying in the game until way late into it. Most of my problems came from either the turrets or the mines. And sometimes the mines are just plain in your way and the only way to get rid of them is either to touch them or hit them with the grenades. And the grenades are really hard hard to aim. Just watch me try to do this. Really? Not a single one? I cannot stand these freaking mines. There, shit! Yeah, I could have just went this way the whole time, but I wanted the one-up that was there. You see this thing? This is a tank bunker. It's where it spawns enemies. You want to make sure you kill those. That's a nice mechanic. Have respawning enemies, but have a way to make them stop spawning. I think that's a nice mechanic. I like that. See that big buddy right there? That's the Goliath, and he can take you out in two hits. You want to take that big bitch out from afar. I like to pick him off from a distance. Give me the Gep gun. After every chapter, there's a bonus stage where you get to play the Goliath. The idea is to rack up a bunch of score to get more extra lives. I had to record that line about five times because I kept saying the idea is to get more balls, which I now have to explain to you. There was an old inside joke with a bunch of old YouTube poopers about the Power Rangers episode where there's a pachinko machine. Check out my new pachinko machine. And in this stupid episode, a character says, The idea is to get more balls. And that stupid line has stayed with me ever since. I hear it in my sleep. Yay. Anyway, back to battle tanks. Uh, do y'all get tired of me trailing off on other shit? Well, too bad, because I'm still gonna do it. The second chapter in the game is where it starts throwing capture the flag type stuff at you. You have to rescue the woman being held captive at an enemy base that's being guarded by a Goliath tank. I find these missions kind of dull and aggravating compared to just blowing up all the tanks or heading to a goal. I don't know. I'd just rather do that than go on a tank fetch quest. Why don't I just go tank grocery shopping, pull up to Dollar General and take up three parking spaces, load up on pizza rolls and pay with a food stamp card. The struggle is real. In these later levels, they really start spamming these gun turrets everywhere. They're really annoying, and if you don't do anything about them, they'll just slowly drain your health as you go by them. I'd go as far as to say they're more of a threat than the actual tanks. I mean, they put these things everywhere. You think you got all of them, and then another one is shooting at you. Only thing that would make it worse is if there was an engineer on the other side whacking it with a wrench. Tank, hit it! Sentry down! To capture the flag missions wouldn't be such a big deal, but they make you do like three of them in a row. It's like that's one whole chapter is these kind of missions. Then it's back to the bonus round to do the exact same shit again. Now we're on the third chapter and the turret spam only gets worse. Look at them all. I'm gonna have to recycle this joke again. So what's next after this? Another capture the flag? Jeez, let it go. Stupid game, make me have to go all over the damn map to fucking stupid turrets and those fucking tanks and fucking ass draw distance and shit. Hey, you remember when I said this game was good? Me too. Huh. 
you know the final level of this game doesn't have a final boss or anything? It's just a really hard level where you go from one end to the other and then back again. Only this time, you can lay down some turrets. That's right, you can be cheap and nasty, just like McDonald's french fries. McDonald's and you! Anyway, like I said, you go in one end and out the other and come on back again, and then you won the damn game. Now, ain't you something? Congratulations, Chad Steele. What are you gonna do now? I'm going to Disneyland! Pick me up a DVD of Song of the South while you're there. And that's Battle Tanks. It's pretty rough around the edges. It could have used a little bit more variety, and it kind of sucks that you only had one tank you could play as. But you know what? They fixed that because there was a sequel, and it is ten times better than the original. Battle Tanks Global Assault kind of fixes everything that was wrong with the original. This game takes place five years after the first game, in the fictional future of 2006. Ah, the year YouTube poop started laying its roots into YouTube. Talking about music again, 2006 was Nickelback's biggest year. They had three songs on the charts, including Look at this piece of crap! So Griffin Spade, who I continue to call Chad Steele, now has a son and he's tried to rebuild the world amidst the ruins. But this lady in this super tank is having none of it. It turns out the whole family has a superpower, and I shit you not, it's called The Edge. Ow, The Edge. You can't get more edgy than that. It's literally in the name. So she wants to kill Chad and his wife and kidnap their son so she can have Ow, The Edge to herself. And the game begins. And you'll notice right away that the controls are a little better. They're a little tighter, a little bit more, just mo' better altogether. And look, your turret actually turns this time. Time, adding a little bit more realism to this campy ass game. Oh shit, I just realized we didn't watch the commercial yet. Global Assault got its own commercial with Snuggle the Bear. Let's check it out. A bear, barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We can make him stronger, faster, softer better. The new battle tanks, Global Assault. Stronger, faster, better. Well, there you go. Now you've seen both Battle Tanks commercials. So one big upgrade over the original game is that now, the more you play the game, you unlock more tanks to play with. Say hello to the Moto Tank. Say goodbye to the Moto Tank. Like the original game, this game likes to spam the gun turrets too. In fact, there's a level that's nothing but the gun turrets for the most part. And man, they're annoying, and they seem to be a lot more accurate than the tanks themselves. You know how you'll be in bed? Some little gnat or a mosquito or something keeps biting you, and you don't know where it's biting you from? Or every time you try to smack at it, you don't hit it, and it keeps biting you, and you don't know where it's at? This is nothing like that. And in the fourth level, you get the Inferno tank, which is the flamethrower tank. And I was gonna go on this big old tangent about how it's the most useless tank in the game and I hate it, but I found out it actually does pretty good at taking out the turrets in this level. This is like the only time I found this tank to be useful. But it has such a short range and such a small amount of health, it's not really good for anything else. I ended up beating this level with the Inferno. But literally in the next level, it's completely and teetotally useless. In this level, you have to go to the the drive-in movie theaters and destroy the movie projectors that are projecting brainwash material. And you can only destroy the projectors with grenades. If you run out of grenades on this level, you're soft locked. Also, what do you think of this frame rate? I had to switch emulators because this level was running so bad on Project 64, I literally couldn't play it. Man, don't you love technology? Technology! Oh my God. Now we're in Washington, D.C., and we gotta locate some data disks, and this is where the game gives you the Rattler. I love the Rattler. It's got a minigun on it. <clears throat> Can we step back for a moment and just take a look at what I'm doing here? I'm destroying buildings in Washington, D.C. in order to find some data disks. Isn't that a little excessive? Like, look, here's the White House. I'm destroying the White House. Who was president in 2006? George Bush Jr.? I bet he was pissed. Sir, a second tank has blown up the White House. Well, shit, my PSP was in there. Watch this, I'm gonna fly over these mines. Aw, oh, shit. How was I supposed to know that box was explodable? There's a box that looks exactly like that that doesn't explode. So after we've destroyed the entire U.S. Capitol, we go to the real White House. The White House is apparently on this level, not the other one. Then what the hell did I blow up? Library of Congress? 
Also, remember that edge thing I was talking about? Well, you get to use it now. Apparently what it does in this level is it incapacitates enemies for a short period. But in the later levels, it will actually brainwash your enemies and turn them into your friends. I know a few hypnotists that can do that. Why are all hypnotists horny over the Jungle Book snake? Maybe I shouldn't ask these questions. Now we're in Europe crossing the Tower Bridge, and we've got some cool music for this level. We've also got the Flippy Tank. Know what it does? It's useless, but it's cool. I had an RC car that could do this. And for the life of me, I can't find a picture of it. It was three wheels and it could flip back and forth and drive upside down. There's not much to say about this level. It's not too bad. But have you noticed that when you shoot the main cannon, the bullet comes from behind the tank? What is that about? It's like the bullet spawns behind the tank instead of out of the cannon. It's weird. This level's aggravating. You have to find all the tanks and destroy them. And they're all hidden. And most of them on this stage are the rhino tanks. They have a bulletproof shield on the front of them so you have to attack them from the side or the back. There's also a boss tank, which is a Goliath with mini guns on it. He's not too bad, honestly. You can get a Goliath tank too and put an end to those stupid rhino tanks. The only bad thing about it is it's slow and it likes to get stuck in areas because it's so big. And it costs a lot of points to deploy it. Instead of lives, you have tank bucks, and every tank costs a certain amount of money. Like this hover tank, which is 15 bucks. The hover tank is a piece of crap. It, it runs way too fast, and it likes to bounce against the walls, and has little to no health, and the cannon isn't very powerful either. The only good thing about it is it's not affected by mines. But honestly, I'd rather use the Rattler or the standard tank. Now, I know there's going to be people in the comments telling me, Stu, if you like shooting tanks, you'll probably like War Thunder. Uh, I would rather not be considered a threat to national security. You can keep your War Thunder. You can keep your World of Tanks. This is what it's about. But we're back to doing the capture the flag stuff again. Ugh. But for some reason, it doesn't feel as aggravating to do in this game as it does in the other games. I guess because the maps are better or something. I don't know. It's not very bad at all, so I don't mind it a bit. Here's one that I do mind, though. I mind very immensely. In this one, you have to destroy a laser that's on the... Apple Apple Tower? I almost said Apple Tower. What the fuck? Yes, the Steve Jobs Memorial Tower. Anyway, you gotta get some guided missiles and then you gotta shoot them at the laser that's on the tower. Now the missiles are hidden and you gotta find them. And the whole time you gotta go through all these underground passageways that are like a freaking maze in order to get over there. And oh my god, I spent so much time on this stupid level. I could have traveled to the Eiffel Tower myself and pulled the plug by the time I figured out how to get over there. And I don't think I could explain to somebody how to finish this level if somebody asked me. I just kind of lucked up on the place I was supposed to be. And then after that mission, you come to the worst mission in the game. The escort mission. Oh my god. Just kill me now. You know what? The main problem with this level is that they put too much shit in the way of the convoy that you're trying to protect. They put mines, they put gun turrets, they put a hundred freaking tanks, they put explosive barrels, they put everything that you could possibly put to make your life miserable. The worst thing is this thing called bouncing beddies that shoot up out of the ground and start shooting lasers everywhere. What's bad is unlike the mines, you can't see them until you've run over them. I have never finished this level without cheats. Normally, I just use a level select code and skip this one. I hate this level. You know, Resident Evil 4 is the only game I think that did the NPC escorting thing right. I don't know what's different about it, but I know it doesn't make me want to put a bullet to my brain. Even in that stupid ass water room. I would play the water room a hundred times over before I play the convoy missions and battle tanks. Every good game has to have that one thing, and the convoy missions is this game's one thing. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do what I always do. I'm gonna cheat. I would normally feel bad about doing that, but not for this mission, no sir. So now I've got maximum weapons, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down a shitload of gun turrets. That'll take care of all these stupid ass tanks. This is my favorite cheese to do in the game. There's something satisfying about laying a whole bunch bunch of gun sentries that just shoot everything inside. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run over all the mines and the bouncing beddies. I don't care if I lose a life or two in this. 
And even after all that cheating, only one of the convoy tanks made it to the end. So that should tell you how bullcrap this section is. Then we come to this level that has this stupid minefield. Luckily, I have some grenades, so I can try to clean this up a little bit. This is another you gotta find all the prisoners and bring them back to the goal thing. Other than that stupid minefield, it's not too bad. But you know what we get to do next? Uh, no. Man, just slam my dick into a sliding glass door, man. But luckily, I could just lay down a whole bunch of turrets and say, fuck it. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Stu, you need to be playing this game legit. You're trying to review it. Hey, I'm just playing it the way I have always played it. You want it played different than you get the fucking game. You play this shit. The next level is like a gauntlet of 80 tanks, and it automatically puts you in a Goliath that's on a rail that you have to slide back and forth on, kind of like the bonus round in the first game. You can leave the rail, though, and after a while, I normally do. One neat little item you have is the cloaking device to make tanks not see you. Now to play some real invisible tank pong. Normally I get bored with this level and just start spamming gun turrets everywhere. It's so silly and ridiculous to watch and normally I just sit back and let them do their thing. So, how was your day? Mine sucked. I had to make a video for my stupid fans. <laughs> I'm kidding. Final stage, and in this one, we gotta find the final boss and kill him. There she is. And there she was. And now the day is saved, and everybody goes back home, and everybody's happily ever aftering. Or are they? Oh my god, sequel, boys? Sequel? No, it never got a sequel. That was the last Battle Tanks game they ever made. There was a Game Boy game, but there's really not anything to say about that. I've played it before, though. It sucks. And that's it for Battle Tanks Global Assault. Or is it? Because if I don't do this, somebody's gonna be in the comments saying, You didn't play the boat stage! You didn't play the boat stage! There's a boat stage! Alright, we'll play the fucking boat stage. After you beat the game, you unlock a secret stage where you play as a boat. And you gotta take out all the tanks and TAKE OUT THOSE FUCKING PT BOATS! Also, there's landmines on the water? I don't understand that. And the boat has the same sound effects as the tank. What? What's funny is you can put the turrets in the water, too. This water defies all the fucking laws of physics, and is very janky looking. Other than that, there's not much to say about it. You just kill all the tanks in the boats, and you get her done. And that is the end of Battle Tanks. What a ride. I didn't really care for the first one, but the second one, I grew up with it, and I have a physical copy of it, so I know it pretty well, and yeah, I love that game. What really brings Battle Tanks Global Assault to life, though, is the multiplayer mode. There's tons of different modes you can play, there's four-player deathmatch, and I believe you can play the campaign with two players. That's where the real fun is. Get some net play going and get four people together and hell yeah with it. And that's going to be it for me. Guys, we are so close to 10,000 subscribers. I mean, we're only a few away. Come on, people. I need 10,000 subscribers. I know most of my sub count is dead YouTube poop accounts, but I don't care. In fact, I'm going to make a goal. If I get 10,000 subscribers, I will do a video on Zelda CDI. That is my promise to you. So let's do this shit. Let's make it happen. In the meantime, I'm going to get on my guitar and try to learn some Def Leppard songs. And then, I don't know, I got to find something else to review. I don't know what I'm going to review next. I used to have a list of stuff I was going to review and then I lost it. Anyway, if you like this video, you know what to do. You don't need me to tell you. Consider becoming a patron. You can do $1 or $5. $5 gets you a Discord and a name on the board and early access. You can't go wrong with that. And if you don't want to do Patreon, I have a new thing. It is called Throne. Now what you do is you go on this website and I've got stuff on a wish list. And if you want to, like, donate, like, a dollar or 50 cents or some shit like that to help me buy something on my wish list, you can do that. For example, I have a shelf on the wish list. I have so many games just strode around my place, I don't know anywhere to put them. I don't have anywhere to put them. They're just strode all over the place, and I need a shelf where I can organize and put them all in a nice place where they can be displayed and everything. So, you can put, like, a dollar or two dollars or whatever you want to crowdfund me a shelf, basically. You don't have to do it, but it would be nice. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. This is Stuart K. Riley. y'all have a good day. And if you want more 3DO shenanigans, check out my video on Army Men. Bye.